Hey everyone, I am here with Joe El Cholo, stand-up comedian. How's it going? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you so much, hey, man. Hey, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm shocked to get you out of bed before like yeah, 2 was, p.m. The last time I woke up this early was like in 96, man, you know. That was to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what what is it about comedians that they sleep in till two three o'clock in the afternoon is it just well, like we, the... we work at night mm -hmm. you know, we work at night everything our movement is at night you know preparing shows uh we do uh writing sessions with other comedians everything we do you know during the day you know we sleep and we do our you know our we live our regular life but at nighttime you know we become you know that that actor the entertainer so you know we, that's why that mornings uh it's not good for us, man. You know, you know. <laughs> At least for me, you know, I, I, I hate waking up early, you know, unless you know the cops come to get me, then then I have no choice but to get up, you know. But yeah, they, they always come at like five a.m. Yeah, like, dude, can you like not, you know, can you wake me up, you know? Like, it's not you, like they don't have different shifts or anything. Right. Send man. the B team. You know. Call me, let me know you're coming, trust me, you know, I go to sleep early to wake up, you know. You're a trustable uh, guy? <laughs> uh, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm told to be trustable, like I said, I, I, I've never crossed anybody who's never done, you know what I'm saying, like I've never done anybody dirty, you know, just to do them dirty, you know, because to me, I figured, you know, I, I live by the, you know, respect me, I respect you, you know, that's, uh, that's just me, you know, I grew up in that old school, you know. In the 90s, you know, East LA, you know, I grew up in that, you know, don't ever, don't cross people over, there's no need to, you know, if you're fair, people will be fair with you, you know, mm -hmm. you'll find out who the, the fake people are, just be real, you know, and you'll, you'll, you'll see, so, I live with it like that, I don't need to cross or do anybody dirty, man, that's, uh, I think this, this world has too many dirty people, man, we need to be more, there needs to be more trustable people in this world. Mm -hmm. oh, definitely. Yeah, man. Think we'll start out. Just do it, man. Haven't had this one yet. Oh. Triple distilled. Jameson. Oh man. Stout edition. So they finish it up in beer barrels. Is that right? Let's see, man. What the? Oh. If you want extra pours, just let me know. Well, I mean, as you can see, man, we have a. Extra we we got a ways to go. So, yeah. So I'm. Like I said. Oh, this smells oh, good. Man. I can smell it from here. It smells yeah, creamy. Yeah, man. Salute, man. Salute. Salute. That's one of the smoothest uh, whiskeys I've had in a long time. Yeah. Very easy, very, very, like you say, oh, like man. creamy. Like it, very, yeah, it's creamy like a butterscotch and cocoa. Yeah, it's a down. very smooth, uh, like I said, that's, that's I, wonder, so yeah, I, I know why they put it in a barrel, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like winemaking. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's an a, art, it's man. It's a craft, it's, yeah. Yeah, you have to do it right. If not, you're just going to get a waste, man. Mm -hmm. You know. So now when you when you go meet new people, friends introduce you, do you always get that, say something funny, man? Yeah, you get told, hey, make me laugh. Make me laugh. Or um, there's always somebody always trying to, you know, like get you to, Hey, you know, like they always say something's dumb, you know, and uh, that's the worst thing you can tell anybody. And, and do you know, make me laugh? It's like, well, what? go to a show and mm -hmm. I will make you laugh. Pay me, I'll constant, make you laugh. <laughs> you know, like you know, sometimes you know, depending if you know what mood I'm in, I'll, you know, yeah, I'll give them a little something, something. You know, like most people won't even know. Like today, I lost my grandfather, man. Oh wow, I'm sorry. Yeah, I lost him at Walmart. You know. See, man, you see? <laughs> you gotta watch out for you. So you see what I'm saying? Like it's just one of those. Hey, it's a big groups. place. It's it's just you know, but that's as much as I give somebody. Now the rest, you go see my video on YouTube, or you can you know come see me at a show. But uh, you know, I guarantee you know, funny. You know, I can't guarantee you you know you're gonna get healed or your problems are gonna go away. But I can guarantee you, you're gonna have a good time at a show. So people, if you hear me, please don't. It's like me going to you and be like, you know, and if whatever you do, hey, you know, go, you know, 
create a label for me, you know. I'd be like, well, I don't have two, so I don't care, you know. Just, you know, have some respect, you know. If you really want to see, you know, if you really want to see anybody, you know, at their at their craft, go to the show, support. A lot of people don't realize that, um, you know, we, we as comedians, you get taken advantage of. Man. You get taken advantage of because the pay is horrible, and people will always want you to do free shows. Oh really? Yes, that's one of the biggest things. That they're always trying to get you to do a free show, and when you're, you know, when you're new to the game, of course you're gonna try to get in as many shows to. But then you wear yourself out, and that's why a lot of comedians come and go because they see that there's no money in it. Like, that's why you see comedians turn into actors, they turn into singers, they turn into. Every, they don't, and then they come back to comedy once they're well established. And well, yeah, they can get they, that HBO yeah, gig. Now, yeah, now they're they're able to make money off it, but a lot of people don't realize, man, how the struggle of comedy is real, man. That's you're showing me up on my own show, man. No, no, no. Like Finish I said, before no, me. Like I said, no, that's not even. This never happens. It's, it's just, it's just the problem is that you know, being a Mexican, it's you always <laughs> get, come on, take it, take it, you know. <laughs> So we get peer pressure all these days, so we just always take the shot. Like I was telling you, man, they sent me a big thing of wild turkey, and I didn't know how strong that wild turkey was. So I, it was like, like half the glass was full, so I took it, and as it was going down, my body was like, uh, uh, uh. Like, we're, we're stopping it here. Yeah, well, uh, so they back up, and I was like, I can't, man. Abort I, swallow sequence. Yeah, it was, nope, not me. Nope. <laughs> You brought up the joke about like your grandfather dying. Um, no, are, are I, you, lost I lost them. Okay, him. lost him. <laughs> are, are you able to have like a serious conversation, or I do. in the back of your mind, are you just thinking? No, like, no, I have that always, comedy mind. Is it no, just no, spinning I, I do, everything? I do both. You know, uh, I feel like you know any, any serious conversation deserves a little laugh. You don't want to, you know, because downs people and it's too serious like you're just like damn dude like this was letting it out <laughs> so you want like i said if you want to keep a conversation going in, in a good way always be positive you know have some jokes in there be real and you know be comfortable uh, a lot of people want to force their conversation into you like they want to sit there and uh, make their point i'm not here to make no a point all i do is i listen you know the way I've learned in life is by listening. If you listen, you learn. When you speak, all you do is repeat what you know. So when you when you listen to people, you realize, wow, you know, you learn a lot of things. You know, religion. You learn of people's ways of, of doing things. And you don't have to like people. You don't have to, you know, but you have to respect the fact that they're an individual. They're humans, and they were brought up a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So uh, a lot of people they see me, you know just like this, you know, and uh, but then I realized, man, that I've grown up in that era, man, where this is what you had to to live. You had to be this to survive it, uh, unless unless you had, you know, a structured family, unless you had, uh, unless you were good at, you know, school and stuff. That's you know, you 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 stood at school, you know, you, you or you had a good family that. And not that I didn't have a good family, but, you know, growing up poor, growing up, you know, in, in that environment, it's kind of, you know, hard. So, yeah, people always, you know, I, 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 like I said, man, when it comes to, you know, I, in my, when I do go live, I always, I'm always doing motivational stuff for the people. Uh, people don't hear enough, you know, motivational stuff. They, they hear too much uh, people ranting or, you know, there's always so much, there's more negative than there's positive, so. I always try to, you know, talk good and try to make sense out of things, you know, and be laughing, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, it goes both ways, man. So you want to be the mo motivational comedian? No, that's another side. That's that's in the, the that's the, um, you know, because I, I would tell you like this, man. If you want to make money, you have to learn everything about comedy. It's not just haha, <laughs> make people laugh. You have to. Uh, be a motivational because the motivational helps you on getting landing uh, district jobs like with the school districts where they need motivational speakers and mm -hmm. um, landing you corporate gigs where you're able to you know uh, 
encourage people to you know be better at the same time have a life with them so you know that's gonna be a skill you know that's something that you want to learn too man because comedy like i said comedy is uh you'll have more success selling drugs than you will do comedy i'll tell you that much man it's just one of those things where either you got it or you don't got it because mm -hmm. uh when you're out there you, you you know everybody starts off like yeah man i'm you know i'm gonna kill it out there you know and then you go out there and you know you realize like oh man you know i do suck <laughs> <laughs> you'll know how you know you'll know when you start doing good by the way people look at you uh, when they congratulate you some people just pat your back and look somewhere else and be like oh man you know, good job homie good job you know you're, you're a badass but when somebody wants you to know that you did a great job they want you to know they will look at you eye to eye and be like no man good job like mm -hmm. serious like like they want you to know with their eyes that they they saw everything everything was perfect are you and still waiting like, for those no i get those. oh you get those i get those oh. and not to be cocky not <coughs> to do that you know but people enjoy my comedy you know because they they don't know what to expect mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what to expect. You're gonna get, you see a cholo. I mean, how many cholos do you see on, on stage? No, you don't see cholos on stage. You don't I, see. When I was trying to look you up, I typed in Mexican comic and it kept bringing up um, Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah, like, and I'm, this isn't it. The him. base, yeah, it's the base. Yeah, stuff. there's really not that many. It's not that. It's I'm, I'm like a cholo Rassic Park, man. You know, <laughs> like you don't, you don't find me. And if you do find a cholo, it's a. It's an actor cholo, man. Somebody that is just uh, playing the part. You know, I mean, I'm. I wake up a cholo. I go to sleep a cholo, man. In between, I'm a cholo. I don't. This is my lifestyle. This is the way I live. Can Can you always keep that going, though? I mean, if you do reach that point where you're successful, are you gonna be still be able to be that cholo? Well, I mean, it depends where where I'm at at that point. Uh, success. If you when you talk about. A lot of people want to be famous. I don't want to be famous. I want to be successful. People, but sometimes fame finds you. Uh, yeah, that's right. But I'd rather be successful for the simple fact that when you succeed at something, you make money out of it. You you have something to look for. Being famous don't mean nothing. This means people know you, and you can't even do nothing no more. Like, you can still be broke and famous. I know several people that are broke and famous, meaning they... Yeah, they're well known and they get recognized, but they don't even have a car. They don't have nothing to show for their fame. You know, you would think that by being famous is, oh man, no, I want to be successful. So, uh, being a cholo, I mean, when that day comes, I'm gonna have to make that choice of where I where I go. Is if it's do I go to Joe Luna or do I go do I do I, does George Cholo just become now a character? You mm -hmm. know, in that in that in that, uh, in that sense, you know, when it comes to it, but. For now, you just have to build, I have to just build that character to once people you know, like it and buy it. And it's it's marketable, you know, and that's what I tell people. You have to be marketable. If you're not marketable, I don't care how funny you are. At the improvs, all those places. Before, being funny was what mattered. Being funny was that thing, man. was like, wow, you know, I want that guy. Now, the times have changed. They don't care if you're funny or not. Can you fill up a seat? Can you get people to the show? If you can fill up that place, they don't care if you eat dick, man. They don't care. Because to them, what matters is money. Mm -hmm. They're making well, it's money. A business. Out of it. It's a business. In the end of the day, they are a business. So they don't care if you're funny or not. They just know that if you're bringing in people, and that's what you are good for. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the music industry, a lot of times they didn't care if you could fill a seat either. They wanted to make sure you had fans who were drinking at the bar. That's make how, money, yeah. yeah, that's how the clubs made money. It was they just looked at bar sales. Yeah, they, they, they could give away the tickets to get in, and which they did. And that's a how lot the improv times. works too. You know, they give you free comp tickets and they push these. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. You yeah, know, can you? We need to sell two hundred fifty dollar tables and. And you know, once and once a member because they 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 give you a two drink minimum, so now. You're obligated to buy, you know, a, a beverage that costs you about, you know, ten dollars, you know, a soda. So you're thinking, wow, you know, by the time you, when you least expect it, you ain't done spent 
over forty dollars per person. Almost, you know. So it's pretty pricey. So that's what I tell people. You know, it's you know, it's not about being funny no more. It's just about being marketable. Can you market yourself? Are people who are attracted to what you're doing? And do they like what you're doing, man? So that's that's what it is now. Man. Mm -hmm. I, I've been funnier than the main guys, than the main comics, but the main, but the main guy is what brought the people. Yeah, so they're he, the names. Or he's the one getting paid. They've I'm got the, the YouTube v views at this point. Yeah, or? they got the videos. They got the, you know they got the following. So as you as a comic, you're just trying to you know get in where you fit in, man. So I've worked with a lot of big comics like Pablo Francisco. I don't know if you ever heard of him, Pablo. No. Big, big time comic, um, Chris Fonseca. He's like one of my mentors. He has sorbi palsy. You know, I was his bodyguard when he would always come down. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I pushed him around in a wheelchair. And uh, that guy was what uh, he really you know, opened my eyes in a lot of things in my life. And, uh, you know, in the, in the way of a lot of people, they feel, you know, that because they can't do something, that's it. I stopped thinking like that, you know, I stopped allowing people to, to put roadblocks in my life and figure it out that there's back ways to get to anywhere you want to go. Uh, I'm not a Trump fan, I'm not a Trump supporter, but I just use Trump as an example to know that if you put your mind to it and you put your want to it, you can su succeed anything. To be the president and to be as hated as, as he is and still be up there with that with that smile, like, what's up? That takes balls, man. And I like motherfuckers that have balls. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I like his point of views or nothing, but anyone that I know that can sit there and make me think, like, <laughs> if he can do it, then I can do it, too. I'm not going to be no president, but I know that, you know, sky's the limit, man, you know? I'm here. I'm here to take it. Yeah. You know? So this is Will It? It is uh, a so Kentucky that, straight bourbon. It smells Kentucky. Yeah, this one's really good. Tell you. Now, do you think that's kind of part of the problem? Like with Kanye West, he's a big Trump supporter. And he, he said he doesn't necessarily agree with a lot of his ideas, he's, he's, but he, um, he, I think he likes that go get him attitude type thing that um that, it's just, that it's drive just Kanye went went about it the wrong way yeah and and that's what people it irritates people because a lot of things that he says people be like are you do you not know what you're saying like he he talked about slavery and it was an option and, and it was like people are just you know that, that, like, that's the exact opposite of what slavery is so it was one of those things where it was like you know have you ever noticed, man, have you ever noticed uh, how crazy things are by, by the coins that we use? If you look, oh, at, yeah, look at if you look at the coins, man, every president is facing to the left, except for one. Lincoln. And that's Lincoln. He's always facing to the right, because people to this day still feel like he did white people dirty. Mm -hmm. They made him face right. They didn't want him. They, they, they didn't put him to that standard word. You see his value it being a penny and shit. A penny doesn't. You see a penny on the floor, you walk well, by. You see a quarter, a dime, a nickel. You're well, like, yeah. Well, look, look at the guy who um, is on the twenty dollar bill, the most common currency out there. Mm -hmm. That's Andrew Jackson, and and he's the one who sent all the Indian, all the Native Americans a lot of packing. I mean, it was basically Native American genocide. On the it trail was, of like that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, anyone that yeah. ever did right. He got rewarded on a the twenty. Anyone that's ever been try to do right has been taken out. Right. Martin Luther King, all these guys that would try to Malcolm X. All these guys, man, you know, and they always try to find fault at what they did and all Kanye, you know, just Kanye went about it the wrong way. You know, he's you know, uh, like I said, you know I mean you 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 handled it the right way. You said there's things that you i wouldn't even go as far as admire but there's like a something that he's doing i just I but just you believe, said the message and everything he's about is you don't follow. i don't like i, I just admire the, the the idea that don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't mm -hmm. do anything um, i was told you know a lot of things in my life i was told i would never make it i, I was told i would never make it 21. 
I was told I was, you know, a loser. I didn't know how to read, you know, in the third, fourth grade. Like it was in East LA, the, the, the schools were so bad that they were just, next, next, you're, you're the next person's problem now. Mm -hmm. By that, by the time you go to the next person's problem, it's like you ain't done not learn math, you done not learn how to read. And how are they supposed to teach you when the next person was like, it's not, not my problem anymore, yours. You know, but I, I was blessed to have someone that took the time and, and really, you know, helped me learn and, you know, so that's, that's why I admire, you know, I don't, like I say, I don't admire Trump, I admire the fact that the message is do not let anybody tell you you cannot do nothing. If you believe that, then you're only, you're just going to sit on your own, you know, in your own shit, in your own misery, you know. Like I said, uh, being a comic was something, a, a choice I made that, uh, I wasn't a good worker. I was, anyone that knows me out there knows that, you know, when it came to a warehouse, everything. I was always talking and making people laugh. That's what I love to do. I mean, we can have the best production. I come into work and our production went, Purr! and it wasn't that I was disrupted. But everyone's happy. But everybody was happy, laughing, and, but it, like I said, I understand it's a business. You can't have people distracting people, and I was very, you know, I was very distractible, you know, because I made people laugh and they stop and they want to hear my stories, and and uh, so it wasn't until I was in the hospital, man, that I finally made that choice that I was gonna change my life. You know, it take it took a, a lot to a lot of people, man. Uh, a lot of people, they death is in a lot of people's minds, like dying and stuff like that. I tell people. You don't know what the hell that is, man. I've, I've been there. I've died, man. And I'll tell you this, it's not something uh, I look forward to. It's not something that I would think about. I know it's going to happen, but I'm not waiting for it to happen. It's going to happen, and it's, I'm going to let it take its course when it does. But death is something a lot scarier than what you really think, you know, because um, are you okay leaving everything behind? Are you okay leaving your children, your loved ones, and never seeing them again? Because we don't know. We, we're only, we have this imaginary thing about being in the heavens. And in the Bible, man, not that I've read everything, but it doesn't tell us. It tells us there's a heaven and there's a hell, but don't say what kind of heaven. It doesn't tell us that we're, you know, it tells us that God's going to come and take us to heaven. You know, if he picks us or we're chosen, whatever it is, you know. Uh, so I believe that, you know, there, there's going to have, there's, there's silence, you know, there's, we're going to have to wait, you know, what happened to the people before us and the before them and, you know, it's, it's a scary thing. So that's why I tell people, you know, what I, I don't feed into the, the negative no more. I, I just live my life and positive, man. I, I don't, like I say, I don't go look for trouble, you know, and if I, there's trouble, I make sure I... I handled it in a, in, a, in a better way now than before. Before I would jump to the conclusion and I would regulate it then and there without knowing the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, like when kids come to you and they're like, oh, you hit me. And you're like, I tried to my ass. And you get mad, you know, and then, and then he tells you, you know, like he hit me first. He's the one that threw the ball in my head and he's been hurting me. And then you're like, wow, I just punished this kid for his faults without listening to the stories. Jonathan, what happened? Well, he's been hitting me. He's been torturing me. He's been taking my stuff. That's why, you know, I beat him, you know. So a lot of times people don't take that, they don't take that step, man, to, to find out uh, the truth, man. They just assume, assume uh, assumption people will destroy everything. Trust, relationship, assumption will do that. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, find out. Mm -hmm. Ask. Try to get as much information before you make your conclusion that, you know, is he cheating or is he talking to somebody? Is he, you know what I'm saying? Don't just assume and, oh, you know, and then make that other person miserable to where they're going to go cheat at. Yeah. That's, that's the, the sucky part. Now, when you're in those um, comedian writer meetings, working on new stuff. Are there any subjects for you that are taboo? Um, well, 
you, you did, uh, a lot of people don't know writing sessions, and it's funny because you would think, you know, being in a comedy world, everybody would know about writing. I'm sessions. just thinking every you're you're on beanbag chairs and. Uh, well, no, well, like you know, it just depends where if we go to someone's house, if we go to a restaurant, if we go to. Comedians have houses. That was like back of their van or. Well, it's it's wherever we feel comfortable meeting up. You know, uh, I would go to, to uh, I would go to a weed shop. <laughs> you do your best work there. Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you have fun. You think you have fun. Well, I have fun, you know, just being there. Because um, I learn not, you know, I learn from experience. I learn from, like, uh, talking to other people. Remember, like, I like to listen. I, I learn. I'm like, wow, you know. I use that situation to, you know, because stoners have a, a way different way of thinking, man. Drunks have a different way of thinking. Anyone that's uh, in uh, into their own, you know, drug has a certain way of thinking, you know. Uh, you know, drunks, you know, are loving or hating, you know. Stoners are peaceful or like to tell stories that they can't finish because they forget. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those meth heads... They are either for the Lord, and they write scriptures, and they do all that, and, you know, but are in a different path. You know, they, they like I said, I would, you know, I always tell people, you know, love the sinner, hate the sin, you know. You know, but writing sessions consist of, you know, just a group of people that we meet up, and uh, we'll take time, like for you, it would be, you know, do half an hour, and we we'll work on your say, what do you want to work with? On uh, a joke, want to write a new joke, you know, so we get your premises, and we start, you know, dissecting, insecting, so we'll build up a set for you, so then it moves on to the next guy, and when it comes to me, you know, I would never really need help writing a set, you know, I might ask, like, hey, well, how do we word something, you know, sometimes it just takes a word to read, yeah, just make it funnier. So I like to ask people, hey, what do you feel about this joke? How do you feel about this joke? How do you feel, you know? And um, and that's how we do it, man. You know, we have a good time. We we, we laugh. We talk. We 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 motivate each other. You know, I, I love to see people win. I don't, you know, anything, anytime, uh, you know, when it comes to a fly or anything, I like to push it out there. I like to invite my friends, and um, I like to see people succeed for the simple fact that it still creates jobs for people. You know what I'm saying? Like people feel like, oh, I'll do my best at a bar show. I'll do my best at a big show. Because um, you have to, as a comedian, as me, as to love what I do, I'm going to give you my best any show I do. I'm not going to just go up there because there's one person. If there's one person listening, then that's that person I got to make. When he leaves, I want him to be like, wow, you know, like, it was awesome. Like I've had shows where there was four people. I've had shows where there was, you know, uh, hundreds of people. But I'm going to give you my all, man. I'm going to give you my, you know, my full-on attention, you know, because you deserve that, you know. And that's just who I am. I'm not going to give you half ass. Or either we're in or we're not. I'm not going to, you know, we don't do crime. We do crimes, either you're all in or you're not, homie, because I don't need someone that's going to get us caught. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when you drink with somebody, you wanna, you're gonna wanna drink with somebody that is cool, not someone that drinks and is sloppy and passes out. Yeah. Because that too, that already lets you know like I, I can't. When I when I would smoke with people at the at the weed shop, you know, I would go on dates with people there. You know, I call it dates. You know, with people that I meet um, because if they wanna row with me. Like, if I'm, if we're gonna do the writing session, we'll meet, we'll go there. I wanna know that if I wanna be dealing with you on an often base and we're gonna be beating up, I need to know what your level of getting high is. Like, are you cool or are you paranoid? Are you gonna be all over the place? Because when I introduce you to my people, I need my people to be like, hey, you cool dude, man. I don't want them to be like, dang, little weird. <laughs> like, is that who you hang with? Because, you know, if you hang around with weirdos, people are going to be like, hey, fool. you might not be a weirdo, but you walk with the ducks, they're going to call you a duck, dude. I don't care if you look like a dog. They're like, hey, dude, that's a duck, man. You know? So 
you have to know the people you you hang with. You know, I like to know when I get stoned with people. I know I like to know how they are. Are they functional? Because uh, if you're not functional when you're stoned, then I don't need you. Mm -hmm. Because I need somebody that's gonna be alert. I'm a gangster, man. I need to always know what's around me, surrounding me, who's around me. You know, can I trust you? If something goes down, are you gonna be there? I know guys that want to be doing. I know guys that talk about they did a drive by and all they did was drive by. You know, I need to know like, nah, fool, like you know, we're not playing with. You're not playing with toy soldiers, you know what I'm saying? You're dealing with the real fools, you know? Like, when I introduce you to my people, like you mean some big people. You mean some people that, you know, if they, don't, if they say no, sorry, you're out. <laughs> like, it's just the way it is, man. It's just the love. I'd rather have, the people I hang with, man, are, I'd rather have three quarters in my life than a hundred pennies, man. I like solidness. I like people. That's what I'm saying, like. I like doers, man, you know, I don't like don'ters, homie. Don'ters are people that, uh, don't, you know, I don't want to do it. I don't, you know, feel right. I don't, like, nah, man, I need a doer, man. I need people that are like, I, I'd rather have two minutes than one. Cause I like twice the fun, homie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Ready to move on? Yeah, man, shoot. <clears throat> Some color to pull on my color to get, man. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... This is called barrel whiskey, and what mm -hmm. they do, they go out and sample bottles of different distilleries, oh. and they just take that one and that one and, and that they, one, and they come back and they blend it. So it's like a Frankenstein, huh? I call it's, it Frankenstein. it's pretty much. I mean, that's what a lot of whiskey is. It's blended. Um, most Irish whiskey is a blend, uh, but they they balance out the flavors. Um, this one's cask. And this so is what, 60 proof, 60 proof. 60, 59, they always write it. A every time they have a new batch, it's, it's going to be a little different. So this is 119.3 proof. You see, 119, <laughs> See, people, if you can't grow hair, drink some of this. Yeah. <laughs> I say, oh, yeah, man, saludos again, homies. Yeah, this one's really smooth, mm. just because it's blended with a whole bunch. I mean, they just... It's, it tastes like a little candy-ish. Yeah, very they, nice, very nice. they just, like, perfect it. Oh, yeah. Now, like, with 9-11, those jokes are becoming a little more okay now. Even though, I mean, people are still alive who have lived through it's it. It's still not okay, man. There, there's some things in, in this world, man, that are not okay. Mm -hmm. about child abuse, sexual abuse, you know, stuff like that. It's just not cool. Now, if you want to talk about, you know, Bill Cosby, well, that's different, you know, because he he dug that hole to himself. He did that to himself, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, when it comes. But on that, to you're making fun of the, the perpetrator, the, not the, the victim. Not the victim. So that's what I'm saying, like stuff like that, man. You know, you just. I stay away from that stuff, man. I don't like to sit. That's not my my taste. I don't believe it. You know, if someone knows how to do it, well, that's on them. But um, you'll never know who's in the audience. You never know. It could be a, a victim. It could be a victim's family. Someone that died. You never know, man. You don't want to cross that path, you know, because you want to, you know, be that kind of comedian. That you know, not me. You know, like I said, I keep it simple. I keep it relatable, you know, talk about grandma and grandpa, you know, the streets, and I play, I'm a good cholo, I play the good cholo, that's what people love about me is that I don't, I'm not up there uh, creating havoc, and, no, I create a, an avenue where you feel comfortable with me. At first you won't, you'll be like, oh man, like this dude's stuck, bro, he's found, you know, but after, you know, my girlfriend can tell you, she, she sees it all the time, people stereotype me. And it's not till afterwards that they come up to I'm me. I'm still keeping and, my distance. And and they love me. They're like, oh my God, you know, like, like oh my God, you, you know, thank you so much. You know, I have people come up to me, tell me thank you. They thank me. They're like, dude, you just made my whole night. I was going through a lot of stuff, and uh, you just took me to another place and just wanted to thank you. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, man, comedy is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be. You know, Good man, it's not supposed. You know, don't 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 bring up subjects like that. Man. Like shootings, I just feel like 
you're being a dirty bird, man. Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're not being, you're not using your mind, dude. You're not respecting the, the people that got hurt. Because I know if it was your mom, or was your dad, or was your sister, your brother, that had that happen to them, you wouldn't be okay with it, you know? So, just like, you know, how, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they perpetrate cholos and make them stu- sound dumb and stupid and or this and that, but yeah, you're the first ones to call us when someone's acting stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not gonna call Uncle Joey the fucking the nice guy. You're gonna call, you know, Crazy Joe, you know, the cholo, the guy that fucking handles shit, why? But yeah, you're talking shit about this guy. You make, you know, fun of him, but yet, he's the first guy you call when shit hits the fan. Mm-hmm. You know? It, it sucks, you know, but it is what it is, you know? So I go out there, I put it for my, I put it down for my people. You know, and let them know, like, not, not every cholo is a bad cholo, you know. There's good people out there, you know. Like, I always tell people, I'm a good cholo. I'm such a good cholo. I went outside and I made sure everybody's car is locked. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> who does that? I don't see you. I don't see you. I did. You know what I'm saying? So, it's one of those moments where, you know, we just got to have fun with people. Now, do you... Who- when, when you're up there on stage, who do you see laughing more? Like Hispanic people, white people? Everybody. Everyone? There's not one, that's not one person I really don't, I can't get a hold of, man. Um, everybody, like I said, it's, it's, I say it universal. It's not like a, like I'm just going after the Hispanics, you know, I'm not going just after my own culture because that's not how it works. You know, you want to be universal. You want to be able to create that everywhere. Where, I'm able to create, I'm able to perform in front of white people, mm-hmm. you know, because in the end of the day, you want to be marketable. You want to make money. If you want to make money, you have to know how to be accessible to whites, blacks, Chinese, and everybody. So by me targeting just Hispanics, it's not going to work because it's fa- even though it, it's as not Hispanics, we're big, but don't mean we, we're, we're buying into it. Mm-hmm. it. It's not just about targeting. I, I, I've talked to a few African American comics, and they they've said that while they're on stage, they're talking about kind of like some racial humor and stuff. That and they'll notice like a lot of the white people kind of like looking around to see if it's okay to laugh at some of the like stereotypical and I, and jokes I've seen that and before, stuff. Where the white people are like you know people just looking around, but I mean that's the difference between their comedy and mine is mine is universal. Mm-hmm. Mine is okay to laugh at because I'm not. I'm not, uh, I'm making it to where it relates to everybody. It just doesn't relate to like Hispanics or what people are like, should I laugh or not? Nah, like my joke is compared to like, it's it's everybody. Everybody is going to laugh. I'm searching everybody's car. Everybody laughs. (laughs) When I talk about grandma, about smoking weed with grandma, you know what I'm saying? Everybody laughs, relates. That's what I'm saying. I made my comedy open to where it's not. But when I tell my stories, it's, I tell the stories on me. So people laugh at me and my stories about getting in the gang. I'll be like, I got in the gang at a young age, man. 35 years old, man. You know? Obamacare, you know, that's when I could get in the gang. So that's what I'm saying. Like, my comedy consists of different relatable ideas, you know, of eating ass and shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that, you know. I don't know if you saw the, my YouTube video, but it was, you know, I remember that day as yesterday, man. I was, uh, uh, I was Jeff Garcia's opener. I don't know if you ever know him, but I mm-hmm. Jeff Garcia. I was his opener. I was his driver and stuff, you know. Just, uh, and I, that was like the last weekend I was his, in his, you know, in his radar because uh, I wasn't, you know, he needed, you know, he needed, like, I was, I'm not a good thing, you know, like, as in, like, you're, I'm not going to be your puppet. I look out for you, you know, that we're gonna do things, but I can't, you know, be there, you know, and see you. It, it just, I just wasn't gonna grow there. Mm-hmm. He saw that. I, I could do my own. I'd be my own person, do my own stuff. So, uh, in the end of the day, that was like one of my last weekend with them. Or, man, I, I just went out there, man, and I had fun. And I, people were always, you know, even in the video, man, people would be like, oh, man. Great video, but you didn't have to stage the laughs. Stage the laughs, 
No, oh, man, everything that I did, man, I did it on my own. Like, the people laughing was people laughing. I did it, and I was, I was like a year into comedy. You know what I'm saying? So people have it or they don't. I know people that, that don't have it. They've been doing it, and just, they're not funny. They're not, uh, surround yourself with people that are, want to be successful and, and want to learn and keep growing. You're going to grow. You just keep yourself at open mics and host open mics and your headliner at open mics. You're just going to be an open mic guy. You know? Don't work, man. If you're going to be successful, that don't work. If you're just doing it because you love comedy and you don't care if you make it or not and you just want to stay there and have 20 years and then be one of the comedians that be like, I've been doing it for 20 years and, and you're still at open mic, dude, well, then you just didn't take, you know. I was just in a parade, Pasadena. They asked me to be in the parade in Pasadena. I was like, hell yeah, like, how do you not? I thought that I take any opportunity, man, if it's out there, if it's a parade, if it's, because why wouldn't you? A lot of people are like, why? Well, no, I already did one, so I'm like, but you gotta understand, man, like, those opportunities, you never know who's there. Mm -hmm. When I do, when I do, like I said, when I perform, man, I don't care if it's a little shitty spot. See, I thought that was a setup for a joke. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say like the perp parade or no, something no, no, like that. No, no, no. Like I was, it was for the uh, Latino Heritage Parade, and they had really? me on their on their parade, man. And and that's man, really cool. Yeah, that's a pretty big honor. You know, I was with the cast of Coco <clears throat> and I didn't do it, like you know, kicking back with the peeps, the peeps from Coco, and you know, it was it was cool, man. Like I said, I met a lot of people, and in the end of the day, man, like you need to be reachable. Mm -hmm. People can be like, man, that guy right there. I like him because he's he's reachable, you know. When you're not reachable, when people be like, that guy don't want to deal with nobody, he just spray himself, and that. we don't like that. Man. Yeah. You about ready? I'm ready, man. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, which one's this right here? This is Lafroig. It is a Isla single malt Scott. When you look for for the whiskeys, what do you look for? Like, what is it that you're like, oh man? Like, you know what? When I first started out, I think probably my first bottle I bought was this. Oh, okay. okay. And I just I went for it because it was, like it was bomb, a cool man. looking bottle. Yeah, <laughs> it looked like a genie lamp or something. And then um, I just I started like finding out I like bourbons a bit and I like single malt, so I started gravitating towards those. Oh, okay, okay. Um, some things I bought, like when I got this, I had no idea what an Isla was. Yeah, I mean, you you're know. gonna find out. Yeah. It's very distinct. Oh yeah, it has a <laughs> like a grassy smell to it. Let's see, man. Cheers, man. Oh yeah, it's very it's like smoky. A, it's like, a like a charcoal. Yeah, like a it's very smooth. It's um, these peat from the bogs in Scotland. Is that what it is? Yeah, and it's all the decomposing matter they just yeah, it has like burn a, it. Like a charcoal it, uh, flavor to it. So. Yeah, it's very like mesquite. smoky. Like a, yeah, mesquite kind of uh, flavor to it, man. It's good. Like I said, it's good if you like that. Yeah, it's dark a dark flavor, like yeah, know, like dark. All all the islas taste like that. Highlands. Um, they have Highlands and Lowlands in Scotland, oh, and cool, cool. Highland is, has a bit less of the smokiness. They use a different type of, I guess, peat. Mm -hmm. Either way, man. Yeah, Lothroig. <sighs> have you ever had family say, you know, why, why do you got to use us in the act? My grandma? Uh, no, my grandma's okay with it. Uh, I told her, you know, grandma, I, I use you my act, uh, but you smoke weed with me. And she laughed, like, oh, okay, me hold, you know. To her, in the end of the day, man, as long as we're making people happy and making people laugh, then it's... So your family's really supportive? Uh, you know, when I started off, I, I thought, you know, I thought so many things. I thought it was going to be such a supporting thing. Like, you know, you're doing comedy or you come from a life in the streets and you're gang life. You're gonna do something positive, and then you realize, man, that uh, it does, it's not like that. It's very, uh, you know, people 
have their opinions, people are not going to like you. It's like this, man, and this, this world, it works like this. Uh, if people can't get nothing from you, then they don't want to. They're going to hate on you because they can't. If you're going to finally do for yourself, if you've ever, a lot of people, they, they build a family, they, they do everything for the family, for the wife, for the kids, for everything. And the day comes when you start doing for yourself, people get mad, people get angry because you're not doing for them anymore. You're focusing on you. And once you have you time, people don't like that. People get offended. People start feeling, wait, wait, what do you mean you're going to start doing things for you? What about us? Well, the us is still there, but it's time for me to grow. Like, I mean, you know, the kids are not babies no more. The kids are teenagers. They're adults. They're Start acting funny, and you know, that's what happened with my life. You know, just people started acting funny, and and it was one of those things where you know they had to move on from my life. You know, it was you know I always tell people you know losing weight doesn't mean you know it has to be from your body. It means it means people had to move on. Mm -hmm. I don't regret it. I don't regret doing it for me. I don't regret finally stepping up to the plate and being a man and taking those opportunities and chances. I love my kids, don't get me wrong. You know, but I want my kids to realize that if you don't do for you, you'll just you'll always be stuck doing for everybody. And you're gonna get old and you're never gonna feel like you ever accomplished nothing. A lot of people feel like that. They feel like they get stuck. They don't feel like they're doing anything to progress. They're just in the same circle every day, every every week the same routine. You get paid the same. You work with the same people, you deal with the same bullshit, you deal with the same, not me, every every time I go out there, man, it's like Disneyland. Disneyland, dude, every day runs different. Every every show that I go to is different. Every show, there's not one show that I'm like, it's gonna be the same as this one. No, because it's a different day, different people, in a different place. I love it, I love the challenge. I love the fact that I can go up on stage and it's me, it's like a boxing match, but it's me against you know, if it's two, three hundred people, or four or five people, I don't care what it is, but I'm, I'm going to sling it. And, you know, I've been, I've done so great where they're like, hey, bro, can you come back and can you be the headliner? <laughs> oh, that's so I'm nice. like, oh, yeah, man, I can definitely close out the show. You know, I, a headliner to me is somebody more established, more seasoned. So I don't use being a headliner as, oh, man, uh, I'm a headliner. No, I, I always tell people, uh, I'm going to close out your show. I can definitely do that, you know. I'm still learning how to close out shows. I'm still, this year I've been blessed to be able to, you know, headline in Vegas, you know, headline in Brawley, man. I've been able to headline in different spots and close out the shows and, you know, and I do Spanish comedy as well. What's Spanish comedy? Like, mm -hmm. just in Spanish? Or? In Spanish, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's a lot different, man, because Mexicans are used to a certain way of comedy. And so when I do my comedy, a lot. It's Americanized comedy in Spanish, so, you know, it's just a lot different. In Spanish, they, they do more story. Mm -hmm. More storytelling. But the stories are long. You know, mine is, I do little stories, and the stories, you know, cut it. Like, I'm not over here trying to, you know, do this whole long span. Nah, oh, man, like, I, I, I do my, I do, like, I just translate my English comedy to my Spanish, so it's boom, 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 you know. So people love me, man. They love the cholo, man. They, the people always, the ladies, the señoras, man, they always like, oh, my God, cholo, yeah. The old ladies, uh, you know, the old devices, everything, man. They, they love it, dude, so, you know, I love it, man. I love the journey. I love, you know, meeting new people every day, and, you know, every day is different, every day, you know. I'm blessed. I thank the earth, man. I thank my God, man. I thank the people around me, man. Thank you, man, for having me, dude, you know. I don't take nothing for granted. I, I love every minute, you know. Might not have the best days, but I still love my days, man, because the people that don't, the people out there, you know, they have it worse, you know. I have prosthetics, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know oh, what I'm damn. saying? Yeah, man, like I said, I don't let nothing... I'm not, I don't need people, sorry. I don't need people to be like, yo, no, nah, man, don't need for that. I'm going to continue moving forward. I'm going to continue, you know, getting us on. I'm going to continue standing tall. 
and I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna find an excuse for nothing. I can't. You know, I have too much to go. I have too much. I built too much to, to just throw it away because I want to feel sorry or I want people to feel sorry for me. Fuck that. I'm a gangster, man. You know, gangsters, man. They have you have to, you know, you have to show authority, man. You gotta let people know, like, nah, man. I, I got it. Don't even trip, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I might need a little bit of help, but I don't need all your help. I get it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, thank you to the support in my life. You know, my lady, my kids, the people that have shown me love and and have you know been there by my side and my my worst, man. I, I know what it is to be alone. I know what it is to to be in the hospital. I know what it is to lose everything. I know what it is to not know what the hell's gonna happen in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what it is to to be scared. Is that what drives you? Hell yeah. I know what it is to lose. That's what makes me, you know, a bigger winner because I know what it is <laughs> not to have. I know what it is to to see, you know, death. I know what it is to see all that, man. And I know that that's not what I want. So as long as God has given me an opportunity, you know, I always tell people, dude, God, man, will not punish you. God gave us commandments to follow them. And if you don't, then that's how you. Our God, my God, man, is going to love me regardless, man. My boo-boos, my, my fuck-ups, my ups, my downs. He's always pulled me forward. And uh, people want God to do it for you. God will throw opportunities your way and people will just, no, nah, no. Nah. Like, dude. Anytime anyone's giving anything, how many times have you appreciated when people give you money? Like a kid, five bucks. They don't care. They spend it on nothing. When someone hands you five bucks, you kind of think like, ah, fuck it, you know? But when you earn that five dollars, you know the value of what you had to do to make that five dollars. It's different. That's what I'm saying. Like everything that I've done, everything I do, man, I, it's, it's about, I know, I know what it is to be in the backseat. I know what it is to be fucking lonely. I know what it is not to have nothing. I know what it is to be in a fucking room having nothing. Just myself. Learning how to... A lot of people are afraid to be alone, but they are alone half the fucking time in a bad relationship. Deal with somebody arguing and fighting and they don't speak. They're fucking... It's like you're alone most of the time anyways. Learn how to be alone and be happy and learn how to adjust to things. Go to the movies by yourself. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with taking yourself out. Why do you have to always take someone out when you should be valuable? A lot of people put themselves in a killing section, dog, and I hate that. Like, why do you put yourself down because someone? How did you know you were ugly until someone told you you were ugly? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know you were stupid until someone says, "Hey, you're stupid." Like, why do you? Why would we value what someone's opinion is if it's bad? I know I ain't stupid. I made stupid mistakes, but sure has everyone else. But that's not gonna stop me from, from moving forward. Just because I got prosthetics now, nah, man. I work every day. I fucking get up every day. I push myself, you know. And trust me, it ain't easy. I have pain. I have pain. I deal with all kinds of shit. But that's still no excuse. That's still no excuse. God still blessed me. God has still given me more than. More than enough. More than I'm just like, you know, thank you. And thank you. And they're going to keep coming. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And more thanks. Because I could have used it on a lot of things. You know, a lot of people use, oh, because of this. And, oh, because when I was a kid, they didn't talk to me. So I have emotional distress issues. And fuck that. You know, I'm not about that shit. My mom know? wouldn't let me go to the party. Yeah, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna you know kill mean? myself. I'm a, yeah, you know, fuck my that. phone got taken away. Yeah, you know, like bullshit has excuses. Nah, no, man, like you know, all these comics and oh, nah, man, just know that you know, there's someone out there wishing that they could do the same thing you do. Mm-hmm. Being that pre- that stage presence, being able to talk in front of people, people, not everybody can do that. Yeah, that's I I admire that. Not everybody I, can get on stage. And talk and make strangers laugh. Because mm-hmm. even if you brought five of your people. But you it, it's them. not just laughing. It's for that half hour, hour, it's bringing joy. You bring in that moment. You bring yeah. that, that laughter. That, that joy, exactly like you said, man. That joy. 
So I take every moment, man, and I and I don't make an excuse, man. And I, I have my ups and downs, but I still always remember that I've seen that. And I never want to feel that shit ever again. I never want to be that spot ever again. So I'm going to enjoy what I do, man. I'm going to enjoy my life, and I'm going to keep moving forward, and I'm going to keep being positive. And I'd rather have that positive mindset than to be all a Debbie Downer. Because nobody likes vampires, man, those energy vampires that boohoo me, boohoo this. It's like, man, you can, every day is, the reason why we sleep is, is, and wake up every day is because we can change every day. We can change any moment. We don't need, you know, if you want to be fat, you can change it. You want to be skinny, you can do it. You can, anything is possible until you finally do it. But if you can keep talking and talking, that's why I get rid of people in my life that I, want, I hear them out and I give them, you know, hey, bro, like, try this. Mm-hmm. Try being more positive. Just try, you know, involve yourself more in a positive note. Hang around with positive people. Stop hanging and listening to the wrong people. Just start listening to the right people. Motivate yourself. Listen to motivational speeches. Is that why you got out of the gangs? I got out of the gangs because I'm no use. I'm useless. I'm like, you know, there's nothing out there for me that I've seen it all, I lived through it all, and there's nothing for me there. You know, when you're young, you get wrapped up in that that life. You think, you know, you know it all, and and then at the end of the day, man, you're in your forties, thirties, and you're having accomplished nothing. You're, what do you accomplish? Nothing. They just all you did was fucking put people through shit. You fucking made people's lives miserable, you know. You sat there, you know, the people that loved you, you hurt the most, and the ones that fucking treated you like shit, you loved them the most. Yeah. It doesn't work, you know? Like, it's crazy, you know? Like, what the fuck, you know? So, to me, I just stopped believing in the bullshit and believing in me and what I need to do to have fun and uh, show my kids that to invest in themselves and if they don't want to it's up on them but they can sit I, I'm doing a see I'm gonna live forever through my videos through my comedy through my stuff and my grandkids and grandkids they'll always know and hear my voice they'll always know what's up there's people that die and that's it people so yeah, you're, you're basically immortal now through your comedy. My comedy. I'll never, my kids can never have an excuse why or blame anything and say, oh, you see that guy up there? He has no legs. But you see him? He's pushing forward. If you're going to fall, fall forward. Because at least when you fall forward, you know what the fuck's up. You know what's in your way. You know, it's when you fall backwards, it's when you fucking don't know. You're going to get hit hard and you don't know what the fuck you mean. I figured if you're gonna fall, fucking fall forward. Well, never fucking fall backwards. At least when you fall forward, you know how to break a fall. You know, like fucking push shit to the side. If I, but you fucking know what the hell you're gonna hit. Don't yeah. be dumb, you know. So my kids, you know, that's what I want to teach my kids is don't use excuses. Not excuses are like hassles. Everyone has one. <laughs> I don't need that. I need them to know that invest in themselves. Be happy, work hard, it pays off, trust me, you know. Don't complain, live life to the fullest, go out, enjoy, meet people, don't fucking sit there and get stuck and early, have kids, none of that, just, you know, learn from me. You know, do you want to be having the struggle or do you want to, you know, get it together early so when it's later on, you're like, man, I'm living good. I got my own house, my own car, you don't have to depend on nobody. I always tell people, you know, people tell me, oh, I'm 100%. No, you're not, fool. Don't tell me that. That is, a, that is the fakest number for people. If I told you, hey, I'm 100% with you, that's fake. That's fake, dude. Now, if you told me, hey, I'm 99.9%, I believe that. That is, a, that is a number that I'm like, okay, because at one point, if someone offered you a billion dollars to take me out. You'll probably take it. A billion dollars. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. 
So that tells me that that one percent still fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> you can still flip on me. You know, have you ever seen the Mormon show? Have you ever seen them say, "You are the father at ninety nine point nine percent," meaning yeah. that there's still percent. You might not be the father. Too. So that just lets me know that if you told me that you're 99.9 with me, I'd rather believe that than to, for you to tell me I'm 100. Because at 100, the people still talk shit behind your back. People still be fucking, you know, they'll still do you dirty. They'll still, they can come up on you without you ever knowing. The reason people get mad that they got caught, the reason why people get mad is because they get caught. Not because they don't know what they're doing, but because they got caught doing it. Yeah. Like cheating. They would have continued cheating if they didn't get caught. But now that they got caught, they're sorry now. Now they're sorry. Now, oh my God, I'm sorry. I did it. Mm-hmm. That is true. Then you got to be careful with people that cheat. If they cheat on the people they're leaving with, they cheat on you. They're quick to cheat on you, man. They'll take you for your money, they'll take you for whatever. You know, if you know someone that's legit, that knows, hey, man, this guy has his head over his shoulders, man, he's cool. Not over here, but we're, you know, not, if he ain't cheating on his lady, then I know he won't cheat on me as a friend because, you know, he's not, he's, he has his mind together, you know, he has loyalty. You gotta get loyalty to people that have a strong mind. When they're out there messing with different ladies and ladies and this and this and this and this, they, they ain't loyal on me. Yeah. They will snake you. They will sit there and eventually, just because the snake's your skin, it's still a cooking snake. <laughs> you got any shows coming up? I have a show. Um, I have actually like three events Saturday, this Saturday coming up, November 3rd, which is um, I'm, I'm doing a softball tournament in Rialto, um, you know, doing the emceeing. And then after that, I'm doing a boxing charity event for. Uh, and Rubido in Riverside. And then I'm going to my friend's wedding, you know, later on that night. So it's been back to back. But you have to put yourself out there, you know, a lot of people, you know, these people that I, you know, I'm trying to be good with these people because, like I said, you know, in the end of the day, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And these people are powerful people. And if I don't put myself out there with them and let them know, and when I say my, when I give you my word, it's my word, man. I'm gonna tell you, yo. If I say I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, dude. You know, but I'll keep it 99 with you. Because <laughs> at that 1%, you never know. Shit can happen. If I get in a crack, yeah. and, you know, that, 90, that 1% fuck me over. <laughs> yeah, anything can happen. Yeah, man. Uh, besides that, you know, like, you know, through, through the week, you know, I have, I always have little stuff here and there. Uh, I have a couple comedy skits coming out that I made. Um, I also have uh, December, I'll be in Vegas too, I'm back in Vegas. Oh, cool. So I'll be out there, man, from like the 13th all the way to the 17th or 18th. Um, so, yeah, man, like I said, man, life has been, uh, I just, I just can imagine what next year brings, man. Cause that's gonna be another uh, everything I said to accomplish this year, man. Uh, I did it. You know, I said I was gonna feature. I did it. I said I was gonna headline. I did it. I said I was gonna, you know, do new stuff, create my own magic, record my own stuff. I did it. Did it. You know, I'm not those guys that puts those. Um, you know, like oh, I'm gonna lose a thousand pounds. You know, no, I'm I'm real. It's like. If you want to make a believer out of yourself, then make those goals reachable for yourself. Because losing five pounds is reachable. Losing 40 pounds is reachable, but extensive. Like it's really, it's gonna, you're gonna have to like be like on it. And we know as individuals, we're procrastinators. Make excuses, you know. It's mm-hmm. cheat Monday, cheat Tuesday, cheat Thursday, you know. Yeah. And I always tell people, they're like, oh, I'm going to die. And I'm like, who just die in it? You know, <laughs> fuck it. You know, just get, get jiggy with it. And just. I always find the people who talk about what they're going to do are the ones who never. Do it. Procrastinate. Yeah. You know, that, that 
Absolutely. They're just telling people so they can get, oh, go, good for you. I'm, uh, hopefully November, it goes as I plan. I have a show that I'm going to do, a podcast called uh, Under the Influence you know, with George Toro. Damn, know. why didn't I go for that name? <laughs> <laughs> well, Under the Influence, uh, it's a domestic it's a domestic uh, violence show which mm-hmm. talks about with the women, men and women who've been in a situation. The reason why I call it Under the in- Influence it's not so much on the on the drinking. It's just that the power someone has in you to, to take the shit. Mm-hmm. Like, why were you an abusive? Like, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you? It's like it always comes back to like I I don't know. Like, there's something over me that was just kept me there. You know, I thought I can change them. I thought I can do this. Or, it's like a experience, man. Like, you know, from, from tragedy to triumph. So everyone that I'm gonna interview is gonna have to be. Uh, you know, they, they went through it, and I just want to, like, you know, hear the stories and how they broke away and where oh, they're wow. now. Uh, and, it, and it's just for, you know, because I like to, I want to reach out. It's a lot of people out there that are stuck in a, the wrong, and they don't know how to get away from it. They, they feel stuck, and that's why I tell people, don't don't ever get in a relationship where you have to depend on somebody. Nah, man. You build. You, you, keep, you make money. You, you sit there. Don't ever let someone, you know, control you that you need them, that they give you an allowance now. Fuck that, you can create your own avenue, your own money. So if anything ever happens, peace, homie, you know. But a lot of people, they, like I said, they fall into that trap. And um, so this shows, you know, some, some motivational to get people to listen, think, and if they're going through it, that there's avenues. Um, and for the people that are getting into relationships and are seeing signs of abuse or seeing signs of the cuckoo in the person, get out. Don't, they're not going to change and they're not changing. There's people, I don't know what people think. I try to do that. I thought that I was able to change my ex. I thought I was going to be the guy, the captain save a woman. And in the end of the day, it was just not worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you you end up walking away with battle wounds, scars. Yeah, uh, so defeated and then you put the kids involved in that situation so are you just hurting everybody so so my show is on that level so it's not like it's not a comedy thing it's on the, on the level where i want to reach out to the women out there that are going through it and men too that make the men we go through it too man we we get you know caught up on the on whatever it is man and i was talking there's no there's no such thing as golden pussy there's not nope i don't care well, she's not that good, man. I'm gonna get my ass beat, you know, or talk or put down, call fat ass and stuff like that. I know I'm fat. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I would hate it when someone's like, "Hey, well, you're skinny. Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> like, now, now you talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. Well, thank you for being here, and be sure to who. Check out some of the links below. Hell yeah, man. Like I said, Joe Ed Cholo on Instagram, Joe Luna. Um, you know, and like I said, man, thank you to the homie. We got the, the drinks. And I thank you so much, man, for having thank me. Thank you. You know, like I said, this is what's up right here, man. You see, brown and white, man. Like I said, don't don't get it twisted. I said, don't be, you know, I'm colorblind, man. I, I don't see color. I see, I see him for who he is and what he's about, man. And, See, now I feel bad because I saw you coming up the steps and I put my, my wallet in the freezer, so... And it's fine, man, because, like I said, yeah. I don't need this man's money. I got my <laughs> own money, you know, I got EBT. <laughs> and if you don't know what EBT stands for, it's eat better today. <laughs> <laughs>